Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology once again and finally today we are starting again with the series of Ascendance and we have discussed on Aries and Taurus. I have made two videos for every Ascendant. The first video is the secrets of the Ascendance and uh, the planets for every Ascendant. Okay, so if you are uh, Aries Ascendant or a Taurus Ascendant and you have not watched the previous videos you can go and watch it is in this playlist itself all right and today it is the time for Gemini today we will discuss on Gemini Ascendants and we will see which planets are lording which houses and in the next video planets for Gemini Ascendants I will be uh, making a detailed uh, report in an excel file where I will show you where the planets the lords are getting exalted and where they are getting debilitated okay uh, and today in this video we will see an overview of the different houses that are there according to the ascendant gemini is number three as we all know it is a dual sign it is a very fast moving sign all right so let us discuss on it in brief there you go if you're new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please do subscribe and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who you know is a gemini ascendant and yes if you want a consultation from me regarding your ascendant or any area of your life then you could always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him depending on your ascendant so now whatever I speak in this video, depending on the ascendant, if you are Gemini, it could happen that 5% of this matches with you. It could happen 10% or 20 or maybe 50% matches. It, or it could happen that nothing or none of the things which I say matches with you because just because somebody is a Gemini ascendant doesn't mean everybody will be the same. Okay, so there are one twelfth of the world population is gemini ascendants they are gemini ascendants so everybody has a different chart so depending on which planets are placed in your ascendant where mercury the lord of the sign is placed and where is your moon and the entire horoscope the placements will vary so whatever i speak here if it doesn't match with your life or with your personality or your chart then don't panic unnecessarily okay it's not mandatory that everything has to match but we will get a short overview of how the houses behave in the ascendant of gemini okay so as you know gemini is number three it's an airy sign so that means now in the ascendant ascendant is the intelligence intelligence doesn't mean how quickly you can understand science maths or economics intelligence basically means how you see the world how you look the world okay so the first house is ruled by mercury now and it's the sign of gemini number three so that means your intelligence is controlled by mercury now and mercury is also one of the significators of intelligence and jupiter is the significator of wisdom so this means that these people they are because this is the lord of their first house mercury so these people are extremely uh, intelligent sometimes and these people they can be wanting to know too many things at a time okay grasping things from here from there from this area from that area generally the Gemini people they they say that they are you know jack of all trades and master of none but sometimes you will see they are jack of all trades and master of all trades also so it depends on your entire horoscope if you will be jack of all trades and master of what <laughs> okay so that's how these people are and these people are extremely talkative sometimes so sometimes if these people call you and you pick their phone you have had it for two hours i have this experience when i talk to gemini ascendant so they call me and i pick the phone and they will talk of politics they will talk of geography they will talk of history they will talk of world war oh my god they will talk of cricket they will talk of football all right everything that is going on in this world is on their cards all right so these people are very good to meet they are very good to hang out with they are very good to chill they are very good to have a nice time just jolly people okay 
Now, of course, if there are planets like Mars, Saturn or Rahu, they may modify the effects, you know, they may be a bit more serious and they may be much more direct. And because the uh, this is a dual sign, so they have this tendency to kind of not take sides, I would say. Not take sides doesn't mean they don't give their opinions, but you will see them saying, you know, oh, this is also good. That is also good. You know, the perspective matters. If for you, this is correct, then that's good. If for him, that is correct, then that's good for him. So this is how they behave sometimes. Now, let's go to the uh, and yes, before I go to the second house, I would say uh, these people are very quick learners sometimes and they can do very good in short term projects, anything not in matters of career. So if something is there which is required in a very short span of time, then you can uh, give them, they will go and get it done. And uh, one dark side could be they may uh, if the ascendant is afflicted or there are too many malefics posited there they can sometimes unnecessarily get into too many arguments and by that uh, they could get a bad name or uh, they could uh, gossip too much okay these are the things which could happen and if <coughs> mercury is not well placed then it could happen that uh, they take up too many uh, things at a time and then they are not able to do but if mercury is well placed then they will take up so many things and they will also complete the task whatever is required okay okay so then we have the second house so the second house is ruled by the planet moon okay so moon is the lord of the second house so because of that they always like to try out different delicacies and uh, because moon is a watery planet you know they have this tendency to speak very fast sometimes you know it's like missile and sometimes uh, they can speak in a way that they mumble the words inside their mouth only and you know you are wondering what they are talking to you or to themselves or to somebody else you know so or sometimes they may shout too much okay depending on where moon is and the planets in the second house so this could be the effects of the second house and they could be talking more emotionally sometimes because you know when they start talking which is the second house then they are a bit governed by the moon and moon is the fastest moving planet as we know okay so it could happen that they speak too much out of emotions and not too much out of uh, thinking i would say that that could happen at times and then we go to the third house the third house is lauded by sun okay so Gemini people, they are very much fixed about their communication, especially now second house is the speech and third house represents the uh, communication. OK, so third house is like the application of the second house. So when they are into writing novels or they are into writing journals or, you know, giving speeches and uh, delivering talks or extempo speech or anything of this kind, then they uh they are they are very strong and they will prepare nicely and then they will they will make proper notes and then only they will go it's not that they are just you know going around speaking something when they are properly delivering something okay and uh, they will do good research before they go and then only they will implement themselves okay and uh, that is why they always uh, love to travel also because leo is in the third house and uh, Leo has nakshatras like Purva Falguni, which is the nakshatra of fun and enjoyment and you know, pleasure and all such stuff. And then we go to the fourth house. So the fourth house is again ruled by Mercury, which is the sign of Virgo. So now in the fourth house, what happens? These people, they are extremely detail oriented. Now fourth house can mean so many things. It can mean education. It can mean mother. It can mean land, real estate. It can mean vehicles. Okay. So depending on the planets placed in the fourth house, you will see the results. But the thing is, these people, they are very much geared towards uh, analyzing these areas of their life in uh, very much detail. This is something which you will always see with them, okay, irrespective of what is going on in their life. So why this happens? Because Virgo is a very meticulous sign, okay, and <coughs> they the trait of Virgo is now Virgo is also lauded by Mercury the Lord of the Ascendant so what happens to these people is that for them the uh, area of the fourth house is very important it is as good as the Ascendant okay so again as I said depending on the planets placed in the fourth house 
issues related to the fourth house can play a very can play a very important role in their life okay so uh, now this will also depend depend on the time place circumstances you know as we say desh kala patra so it means that the <coughs> the age can also be an important factor so for example if somebody uh, is a gemini ascendant and he or she is very young you know 5 years 6 years 10 years then they could have this tendency to uh, learn quite well because fourth house is the house of school and education and knowledge so they can uh, like they might like to go to the school or they might like to learn different things that could be there so, so suppose somebody is of the age of uh, 40 then they not 40 i would say 30 35 then they may be enthusiastic to buy a car and if somebody is at the age of 35 or 40 they may be enthusiastic to buy property okay so as i said depending on and the dashas will also modify what they are wanting to buy and they may be uh, quite attached to the mother at times okay and this is also very uh, prominent because the second house which is the house of values and one's traditions is also ruled by cancer which is the original fourth house which is the sign of the mother so they can have uh, good communications with the mother and it could happen if they have a difficult relationship with their mother Uh, they can feel a uh, lot of strain in them they could feel that you know life is not working out the way they are want they are wanting it to work out for them all right so these are the ways by which you can uh, understand what is going on okay in the fourth house all right so let us discuss about the fifth house now after a while so gemini ascendants for them the fifth house is the sign of libra as we all know number 7 and libra is ruled by venus so because of this gemini people they are extremely versatile when it comes to the fifth house so what's the fifth house fifth house is the house of children it's the house of love romance fun creativity it's the house of intelligence and it is also the house which tells you why you get up in the morning as i always say in my videos fifth house is probably the most important house in the horoscope because that decides what are your passions in life okay so gemini people they are very much attracted towards their passions why because venus is the karaka for attractions okay so you will see sometimes gemini people they even though they are in the office they might sometimes be uh, doing stuff related to their hobbies in inside their office it could happen because hobbies are seen from the fifth house and to some extent the third house also but primarily that which gives you lot of happiness and pleasure inside fulfillment at a deeper level is seen from the fifth house and this is ruled by venus so venus is the planet itself of arts creativity you know media and many a times this can also represent things like youtube because youtube is under venus so many times you will see that many gemini ascendants they they are either watching too many videos in youtube or they are themselves having channels in youtube okay or even if somebody has too many planets in gemini they could be grazing over uh, videos in youtube so now if this uh, venus which is the lord of the fifth house is somehow linked to the 10th house then this could become a part of their profession or if venus is in you know houses like uh, the houses of money second sixth tenth and eleventh so if they are having link if the lords of these houses are linked to the fifth house then they could also take up this as a career option and uh, these people they like to be with children very much and they like to play a lot of games with children also and that's the way they function regarding the sixth house uh, the fifth house i mean so now let's go to the sixth house so the sixth house is the house of competition sixth house is the house of your daily workload okay that's why it is known as the house of job to some extent uh, it doesn't decide your status or your reputation in the society it is just referring to the daily work which you do in the society and for gemini the sign which is there in the sixth house is the sign of scorpio so again this is a watery sign and the sixth house is the house where you have to put a lot of efforts okay so sometimes if 
mars or mercury is not well placed then it could happen that they will always try to take the easy way out it could happen or it could happen that they are finding out shortcuts to do things faster than they should be doing but if mars and mercury are well placed and if the overall chart is strong then it could happen that they are very clear in how to get things done okay they are very clear in how to win the competition they are very clear in what are the steps that i need to take okay and they can have an emotional outburst at times if they face too much competition so uh, sometimes you could see them that you know they are going around breaking things <laughs> not not that they are breaking big things you know but they may throw the pen or something like that i have seen sometimes of course as i again say this will depend on the entire chart of course not to make judgments by one placement why because scorpio is the sign of transformation is the sign of fear and anxiety so wherever scorpio is that dynamics comes there so because it's the house of competition so when they are facing too much competition and if the chart is not uh, very strong then they could feel all this but if the chart is strong then they will be able to uh, cut through the competition in a very secretive manner because scorpio is also very secretive you know they they can uh, make deals behind doors you know they can uh, sign lot of contracts and things which people may not be aware of and at the end you know that oh yes this is how this person uh, won the competition or performs in the job so that's about the 6th house and then let's go to the 7th house the 7th house is primarily the house of the spouse and anybody who is intimate to us who is very close can at times also represent friends but primarily it's the house of marriage it's seventh house is the contract that you sign that i will stay with this person for the rest of my life hopefully <laughs> and this house is ruled by the great benefic jupiter because the sign sagittarius is in the seventh house so this means that the gemini people can at times get attracted to marry somebody who is who is you know very mature who knows a lot of things and knows how to connect the dots as you know it's said uh, that sagittarius are very good in connecting the dots so what's the difference between gemini and sagittarius at times you will see it becomes very difficult to distinguish that this person has gemini prominent or this person has sagittarius prominent so i'll tell you the secret how to know if somebody has which sign prominent among these two so gemini you will see if gemini is prominent they will be talking of too many things but they may not be aware of the conclusion they may they may not be aware of how that will impact their lives or they may just talk it just for the sake of talking they may not mean it necessarily but sagittarius is on the other side sagittarius people you will see that uh, whenever they are talking uh, they will always talk with gravity they will not not just talk for the sake of talking that is why they may not talk sometimes too much and sagittarius when it comes in the 7th house so what happens is sometimes i have seen gemini people they feel that okay i have too much of truck loads of information but i do not know the conclusion you know or other than that uh, i don't know how this will benefit me in my life so whenever they uh, sometimes see somebody who is very mature on those lines yes and who can also inspire people sagittarius is the sign of inspiration also who can guide others who can uh, who can uplift others so then it can happen that they kind of gravitate more towards these people for marriage purposes may not be for love and romance because that's more of the fifth house which is ruled by venus you know so they may not necessarily be romantically attracted to somebody but at a course of in the long run they may want to get settled with somebody who is like this or okay and that's very good in fact and then let's go to the 8th house so the 8th house is ruled by saturn the sign of capricorn is in the 8th house and 8th house is the house of transformation and this is a house which saturn is also the karaka for yes saturn is the karaka for the 8th house so now for gemini people they will experience that whenever they are undergoing some kind of a transformation it takes 
a long time for them to you know, grasp that and you know when i say transformation i don't mean some superficial change transformation at a very deeper inner level when that is happening then you will see that they take a long time to you know go through that you know because capricorn is the sign which is the own sign of saturn i would say and it's also the sign where mars gets exalted so a lot of discipline a lot of structure so gemini ascendants i have seen if they undergo some major drastic change in their life then they kind of take a lot of it takes them a lot of discipline which which essentially means that unless they make their life more structured more balanced more disciplined more realistic more practical i would say then they don't ultimately get transformed okay they stay the same but if if they want to get transformed then they have to put some serious efforts there okay so now this transformation can lead to something good if saturn and mercury are well placed in the chart or if saturn and mercury are not well placed then this transformation can lead to uh something not very good also okay somebody may go from a normal person to a a drug addict or if saturn mercury is well placed then from a drug addict they can become very spiritual okay so it will depend on the chart what is happening and then we have the ninth house which is ruled by aquarius again it's the house ruled by saturn there you see and jupiter is the karaka for the ninth house so now when it comes to matters of the ninth house gemini people will always like to this is i have seen in my experience that they will always like to gravitate towards some spiritual community when i say community i mean a group of people where you know they are doing similar things they they may not be very interested in uh doing things alone or you know doing things in seclusion they may not prefer that why because aquarius is the sign where you find people it's the original 11th sign you know and it is the house where you also contribute towards the society that is why at times aquarius can also mean donations at times i have seen so this essentially means that whenever they think of god or spirituality which is the ninth house which is the core principles of the ninth house then they might want that why do i uh, read a book alone let me read it with somebody and with somebody doesn't mean with their husband or their wife they may they may want it to read with you know another 10 or 20 people or 30 people or maybe with 1000 people <laughs> that could be there so that's very good in fact and this is how they find a uh, spiritual fulfillment and then they will go to these uh, spiritual centers and then they will try to connect to people at a one to one basis and they also have to do a lot of hard work because again aquarius is ruled by saturn and it is also ruled by rahu so at times gemini people can also be gra gravitating towards different religions okay hindus may be interested in islam or christians may be interested in judaism or it can happen either ways okay so of of course this will depend on where the moon is where jupiter is and where mercury and where saturn is so and which dashas you are running so that will modify the results i would say and uh, finally we end up going to the 10th house so 10th house is again ruled by jupiter okay 10th house again is a watery sign here so in this case we see that the second sixth and the 10th houses these are the houses of earth or money they are watery houses okay in a gemini ascendant so just like the sixth house even when it comes uh in the areas of the 10th house it could happen that these these people are uh, very much wanting to get things very fast and it can happen that they they need kind of a connection with their work okay so you will see these people and uh, because pisces is a very philosophical sign so what happens is i have seen sometimes that these people have to find some meaning you know some deeper purpose in their work if you just tell them you know just sit and keep doing this for the rest of your life uh, they may do it uh, or they may not do it depending on the kind of uh, fulfillment which they get you know they 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 should feel that i am ultimately becoming somebody or you know someone better than the one i am currently because that's what pisces represents at a higher level 
and these people can be uh, very good guides or counselors or uh, they can become uh, spiritual healers because of this and because of jupiter depending on the placement of jupiter they can also become a teacher okay but pisces is not more of a teaching you know it's more of kind of a counseling side i would say it's not very strict uh, and it's not very much bound by duties or by rules and regulations so uh, gemini people they could uh, get, get this feeling that uh, maybe i should take up some career where i can you know talk to people and connect to people one to one and i can you know help them uplift themselves because that's what is water sign you know interacting with people and understanding uh, at a heart to heart level who they are and pisces the sign where you know you uplift people and you give people hope that you know uh, your life will become better okay then let us go to the 11th house of networks and communications and elder siblings and you know contacts so now mars is the lord of this sign okay aries is the one which is in the 11th house so that is why this is the main reason why you will see gemini people they uh, tend to have too many contacts too many friends at times can become superficial but if mars is well placed you know mars is uh, very well placed then they can have lots and lots of close friends okay uh, many times i keep hearing them telling oh he's my best friend he's also my best friend he's also my best friend she's my best friend so it will depend on uh, who these who, where, where these planets are placed especially mars and mercury that will tell you uh, what is happening in the area of uh, friendships okay and it could happen that these people uh, when they meet friends you know they uh, they can very much they could be very aggressive in uh, making new contacts okay so whenever they hear that oh maybe i can get his or her number you know and maybe we can sign some deal later on so then they will be very aggressive towards getting their numbers and at times they could invade the the uh, the other person's privacy also because you know mars is a soldier and the soldier is like no no i will get what i want you know <laughs> so it will depend on where mars is and uh, how they use these contacts okay so this is one reason why uh, they have too many contacts but again as i said it can become very superficial also if mars is not well placed okay it's like you have 10000 facebook friends but no friend in reality and you are crying inside the room alone okay this could also happen and then lastly let us go to the 12th house which is a sign of taurus and what is the 12th house 12th house is basically the i call it the house of escapism escapism not in a good or bad sense it could mean either ways okay because it's the house of spirituality also because spirituality means escaping to the original reality but 12th house is also the house of uh, addictions and what you do when you are alone or you know when you are secluded with somebody it's also the house of bad pleasures and affairs and all such stuff so um, because venus is the lord and taurus is the sign and taurus is the sign of you know beauty it's the sign of drinks anything all the fancy stuff you know the liquids you know all the uh the uh, deodorants and all the fragrances of this world you know flowers anything beautiful you know furnitures anything which is very soft anything which is very delicate anything which is very refined all these things are under the sign of taurus so these people they might be too much pleasure seeking because of this at times and they might always you know want to be in their comfort zone uh, and they might always um, want to just go and relax maybe you know you know nice furniture at times and they may feel that yes when i'm here you know it's like i am relaxing and because it's venus the 12th lord so it can also happen that at times you know when it comes to sleeping you know they are they prefer a very nice soft uh, bed you know it it could be difficult for them to sleep in a chatai or in a you know mat you know they will want a very lofty mattress at times and they could also be delaying their sleep because venus is a rajasic planet and rajas uh, doesn't let you sleep you know it creates a lot of fire so 
you could see them you know that uh, they are grazing on stuff like facebook youtube or some other uh, stuff related to venus you know like watching movies in the night these things could happen so these could hamper their uh, sleep patterns i would say and because of this their health may not be that great but if they uh, keep this under limit under check and if they uh, sleep on time then their life could be much better okay so there you go these are the planets which are ruling these houses for gemini ascendants and as i said in the beginning i will also again repeat nothing which i said none of the things may apply to you or 10% or 100% may apply to you okay so it will depend on your original birth chart and where these planets are placed and the next video which i make will be on uh what kind of well, where are the exaltations and the debilitation signs for these planets okay and how do they behave when these planets are placed where okay and how does these planets modify this gemini ascendant and that is how you can get a better understanding of how the ascendants function okay so there you go if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and share this video with some body who you know is a gemini ascendant or has too many planets in gemini and if you want a consultation from me regarding your ascendant or any other area of your life you could always go down to my description section you will find it uh, the link to the website there okay there you go god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him definitely irrespective of what is your ascendant okay thank you very much wish you Good luck. Bye-bye.